Some days I sit here and I have really random thoughts about the differences between England and Sweden. So in our house, we've got a bathtub and something that I find really strange, and I'm fairly sure that this is a difference between the UK and Sweden in terms of house design, is the way that the bathtub is installed. Here's ours, and as you can see, it looks like a normal bathtub, but it's actually movable. Oh my God. And I'll tell you how I discovered this, because I was bathing my little boy and I, I leant against the edge here and the whole bathtub tipped up. And luckily there was enough water in there for the whole thing not literally to fall over. But it just seems crazy that they're freestanding. Now the difference in the UK is that this line along here, we actually build into the wall or at least into the tiles so that you then tile right down to this line and then there's a ceiling strip that you normally have along the back. And that normally is enough to hold the bathtub still. But of course it does limit your options because it's then fixed in place. Now there is one actual advantage to that, which is that you can then, of course, open up that bit, pull it out and see all the stuff that's underneath there. In fact, there's some Ellis's cars <laughs> underneath there. I ought to try and get those out. As you can see underneath, there's literally just a drain pipes from the bottom of the bath there, straight into the grate in the ground. And the flow of water you think would be quite high, but actually it does just flow straight down and you never ever get any water coming out here. That's probably because it's done by Swedish plumbers though, not British plumbers. <laughs> the other big benefit is in the UK, when it is attached into the wall like that, you can often get a leak from a bath underneath, you know, from where all the drainage is. And you don't know about it until the water's dripping through the ceiling in the, in the room below. So it's got, it gets to some advantages too, actually. What about you, Lindsay, who, by the way, is another Brit living in Sweden? She's also Swenglish. Hi, everyone. Me and Quinn here. Lindsay, head to your. I'm also Swenglish. And we're going to show you our bathroom. Because Ash is doing a video about bathrooms and how baths don't attach to the wall, Quinn. Like at Momo's in England. It's stuck to the wall, isn't it? So, normal bathroom, sink, toilet, towels. Hello. Wild child and a bath that doesn't attach to the walls. Look, nothing. You don't need to attach it to the walls. No dodgy sealant, no nothing. You just go to Bauhaus or somewhere, buy your bath, shove it up against the wall, and Bob's your uncle. You can have a bath. Anyway, hope you like my bathroom. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. So that's the lovely Lindsay, who's also like me, one of the only Brits in the village. She's from Teesside, but I love teasing her and saying that she's from Newcastle, uh, Bait a Grove and all of that. God, that was a terrible impression of a Geordie accent, wasn't it? Sorry, Lindsay, in advance. Anyway, what about you, Mo? Mo is one of my other Swedish friends over here, born in Sweden. What do you think about bathtubs? We don't have a bathtub. Uh, we used to have it in our previous apartment. But honestly, we don't miss it. However, we do have uh, one of those baby mini bathtubs for the kids and uh, it works great. There you have it. There are the differences between bathtubs in the UK and Sweden. Odd in some respects, but useful. And what we won't get onto is the tap situation with the mixers, because as most of you know, in the UK, we have a hot tap and a cold tap. And I used to defend it like anything. It's really useful having a hot tap. It's useful having a cold tap. But actually, would I ever go back to separate taps? No, it seems utterly pointless. Anyway, I'm going to have a sit down. So have a nice week, everybody. Comment below with your thoughts about bathtubs and mixer taps as well. I'm going to sit on my bath. Whoa!